All is fair in love and war. On this episode, we're discussing the former here at AfterBuzz TV. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. <laughs> 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 Bum bum ba dum 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 bum ba Hello everybody, welcome back to After Buzz TV Studios. This is Game of Thrones off season. I'm Ryan Malati, and I hope you enjoyed our rendition of the Game of Thrones theme song by Ramin Jawadi, which we did an episode about the the music of Game of Thrones. We did. Go and check it out. Um, I'm joined today by my lovely hosts. One to my left, Kristen Snyder, aka Cinematic Escape. Hello, what up, Kristen. guys? Happy to be here, per usual. And as you may notice, this panel tonight is dominated by women, not unlike <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> Dominated. What, what? Continuing the dominatrix. <laughs> it's the, the dominatrix. Yeah, sure. Is the... Well, stop talking, Ryan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tara Erickson. <laughs> at Tara Erickson. T A R A E R I C K S O N. And I'm a lady too. I love how you spell it. Like, Erickson's sure. this really obscure Weird name, name that everyone needs to... I always to... feel like it, I say Terry Erickson, because I bl blend them together, and yeah. that's not my name. Terry Ter Erickson. Exactly. It's like a dinosaur. Yes. Hi, I'm Bob Smith. B-O-B-S-M-I-T-H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, happy birthday, Dave Child, who's yeah. not in the studio with us today. Happy birthday, big guy. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully soon. Uh, another shout out to my socks. Wow, right. G-O-T socks. Winter wow. is coming, so be sure to wear your socks. These are from my Aunt Heba. She has a YouTube wow. channel, Heba S, where she does makeup tutorials. Ladies, check her out. Hey. Thanks, and Heba. she got you these Game of Thrones socks. Love it. Only because she knows I'm flexible enough to show them off. And because she loves you? And because, well, I don't know about that, but I'm going to assume, yes, my aunt loves me. Not as much as Jon Snow's aunt, but she loves me nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of love... It's February. This is our Ooh, February yeah. show. Yeah. The month of February. Love is in the air. Mm -hmm. We're going to discuss love stories. We've discussed relationships and love before on this show, but... Um, can't get enough love. Can't, you can't put metrics on love. <laughs> Everybody loves love. But I feel like <laughs> this episode, we're discussing the most powerful love oh. stories. There's so many love stories in yeah. Game of Thrones, but the metrics for this isn't going to be like... Um, you know, Walder Frey and his child brides, you know, or Craster and his daughters, you know, or Ramsay and, and, and Sansa. This is, this is, there has to be a, a distinct, powerful love interest, at least mm -hmm. from one side of the, race, of the relationship. Yeah. And that's how we're going to discuss it. <sighs> but before we get into our top powerful moments of love <laughs> countdown, let's talk some Game of Thrones news. Kristen, what do you got for us? Game of Thrones yeah. news, one of my favorite parts of our show. George R. R. Martin turned down a Game of Thrones cameo in season eight. Really? He said that he had the chance to appear in the final season, and David Benioff and Dan Wise extended the opportunity for him to come be in season eight, but he turned it down and said he decided to focus on writing his next book, The Long-Awaited Winds of Winter, instead. Okay. But he did mention, just so <laughs> everybody on. knows that he previously did film a cameo in the oh. show the first the game of thrones pilot which had to be reshot it was he was a guest at danny's wedding but that was when she was played by tamzine merchant and all yeah. that footage got thrown out when they recasted him no. wow. so he was supposed <laughs> to be in it you're telling me during the the wedding where the, everyone's mm -hmm. killing each other and having sex all over the place <laughs> George R. R. Martin's just sitting it's in the background chilly, as a guest, yeah. like, what, eating a chicken leg or something, yeah, just hanging out? I, I, like, why like, can't they show us that footage? I'd exactly. love to see just, that. Just unleash that footage for us. And just so you guys know, also, obviously, he struggled famously for eight years to write the sixth novel in his saga, The Winds of Winter, but there's also a planned seventh novel. A Dream of Spring is supposed to also come out. And of course, Game of Thrones returns for its final season, April 14th. But a prequel series, co-created by Martin, mm -hmm. will shoot a pilot this, pa this uh, coming summer. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, and right. no word yet if George will appear in that show. <laughs> I hope so. You know, if, for him to say that I can't shoot a cameo because I'm working on my books is kind of, I think it's kind of silly. Dude, yeah. make it happen. He's like, I can't go the whole way from New Mexico to Northern Ireland to be in one scene. But come on, man. This, is your, this is your life. You wrote the books, buddy. This is your life's like, well, whole I know, project, for, your legacy. Yeah. I agree. Far be it from us to, to speculate on his, like, you know, medical condition about whether or not he's suited to travel long distances like that. I mean, I'd rather him just Who finish knows. the books and stuff, but so I maybe think, that's... I think he's doing what he thinks the fans would want him to do. Yeah, I would agree with that. They probably yeah. want more books. Still, I just want to see what kind of reactions he offers for whatever cameo he's in. <laughs> yeah. Is he going to be, like, deadpan, or is he going to be, like, trying to really make it work, you know? I mean... <laughs> He tried once with the Dothraki wedding. We didn't get to see it. What do you yeah. think this cameo would have been? Man, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's why they actually recast the whole thing. Because <laughs> he was in the pilot. Just, <laughs> the whole, the sorry, George. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. we got a little problem here. It's really um, because of George. Nobody how, works. How do you think uh, Tamzine Merchant feels having to not get the part then? And yeah. then I mean, obviously, Amelia Clark. Her career has just like skyrocketed after yep. having this part. So That's it's like, can rough. you imagine being the first Daenerys and then being cut? It's tough in, Wildly in Hollywood. Depressing. It happens. Wildly. It happens all the time. Yeah, it is depressing a lot of times when someone books over you. But you just got to think, it's their blessing. This is their yeah. blessing, right? Not yours. Yeah. You'll get one down the line. That's a tough one, though. <laughs> oh boy. And then Very skip tough. to twenty years later, and you're like, where's my blessing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll be in the in the the pilot of the uh, yeah of the next like Maybe. the prequel of the prequel. Get She's going it. back in time. We need Get her to go it. back in time. We need her to go back. <laughs> Where are we going it. with these love stories? I can't wait any longer. Sorry, I was just like, is that all the news? Because you had a lot for us. And I know. I, that was good stuff. That's all my love. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Thank all my you. news. Now I'm ready for love. You ready for love? Yeah. God, I got the facts all the way. Now I'm just ready all? to spill myself into love. Okay, Ooh, well, before good. we jump into <laughs> this uh, best, most powerful love stories countdown, I want to ask you guys, I want to open the floor a little bit mm -hmm. as to what you think constitutes a powerful love story. You know, I mean, we see <laughs> examples of love stories in almost every story that is told, mm -hmm. whether it's horror or fantasy or sci-fi or whatever it is, but what makes a good love story? What is it about the story of love that makes it so such a powerful one? I think you touched on this earlier. It's got to be two-sided to re for yeah. us, the audience, to really feel it. I mean, we know when it's one-sided. We know when one yeah. person likes the other more. So uh, you did touch on that earlier, and I think it's so important that it's definitely two-sided. And I feel like that's been the best loves in my life is when mm -hmm. the other person equally likes me. Yeah. And right. unfortunately, most of the time, you know if it's unequal and totally. who likes the other one more. Who's sending those texts? Right. It can, yeah. <laughs> as long I know, as it's, right? it, it might it might be one-sided, but as long as it's passionate love from mm. one side or the other, it can't be wishy-washy. It can't be lukewarm. It can't yeah. you know. It can't right. be like ah, I'm not sure how I feel. No one wants to watch that. That's no. not interesting or compelling. What do it you has think, to be Sarah? like an undeniable connection that, especially if it's read on camera, but also between two people, mm -hmm. uh, which also makes it double-sided. But like the the connection, I think, and then passion comes with that because it's like chemistry. Mm -hmm. I think chemistry is the biggest thing, yeah. man. It's it's like if both people feel chemistry, then you're like, it's on. And hopefully they're also interesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. because like there can be chemistry, but then you don't get like intellectually matched well. Right. right. But I feel like there are some couples that we'll talk about that I think have both. You're absolutely right. Yeah. The, I, can I also say yeah. forbidden love? Like yes. most of these, the best love stories in Game of Thrones <laughs> are when it's forbidden yes. Yes. and they're not allowed. And I find I that agree. in my personal life as <laughs> well. <Wow. laughs> Yeah. There's quite a few men who, who aren't allowed to be dating me per their culture. Wow. Yeah, I know. And those seem to be the ones I really like, of course. Uh huh. Yeah, you're absolutely Ooh. right. But forbidden love. Forbidden love, um, you know, love that that's, that's what seems to be written in the stars, it's meant to be, yeah. you know, that usually doesn't play out. There's always, there's always got to be something happening to involve conflict. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes not just a great love story, but a great story. Mm -hmm. is conflict. And so when we go through all these examples, we see where the conflict is, and we're going to talk about, you know, what makes it such a great and powerful love story. And to start us off on our very first love story, I figured it'd be appropriate to start with the love story right. that really started mm -hmm. the whole ball rolling for the entire series. Mm -hmm. And that's the love story, the forbidden love, mm -hmm. the Romeo and Juliet, if you will, <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Lyanna Stark, 
and Rhaegar Targaryen. Yeah. We're told that that Rhaegar abducted Lyanna, mm-hmm. which started the Civil War or uh, Robert's Rebellion, right? right? Started it all. Right. But now we know that their forbidden love is what started that war because Lyanna ran away with Rhaegar. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And <laughs> didn't tell Robert about it. <laughs> right. Just decided to let everyone believe. Oh, he abducted me. <laughs> what was she <laughs> supposed to do? Oh, I don't know. Tell the truth. Oh. All right. So, so tell me, what, what do you guys think about this love story? You know, it's one that we we only actually saw one really one scene in the actual show. Which, mm-hmm. by the way, if you're watching on on YouTube, you get to see it. Give us a like if you like our video. Subscribe if you have so you don't miss the next one. Uh, but if you're on iTunes, please subscribe and, and also check out the YouTube video because we have some fun media to show you. We have clips from, you know, little slideshows from every every love story we're talking about. Um, so anyway, we've really only seen it once, and there it is yeah. up on the screen there. Mm-hmm. It looks a lot like Daenerys' brother, uh, Viserys, <laughs> doesn't he? A lot. A lot, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm sure they did that on purpose. But there they are getting married se- with a, se- a secret maester. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, they mo- they might be the most important players in all of mm-hmm. Game of Thrones. Obviously, like you said, they started a war that ended yeah. up ending both of their lives. And, yeah, I mean, we got the most romantic equation in Game of mm-hmm. Thrones. R plus L equals J. I mean, mm-hmm. that might be the most romantic equation in all the world, actually. For those who aren't familiar, Rhaegar plus Lyanna equals Jon Snow. The and- Jon yeah. Snow. We'll uh, we'll touch on that. Absolutely. That was gonna be why it's the greatest love story, is because John came out of it, and I yeah. love him so much. Who Me doesn't? Who do- Everyone. He's gonna Loves save him. the 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 just the kingdom. Ollie didn't yeah. love him too much. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, you see what happened to that guy. Yeah, you yeah. see what happened. Try not to love John. See how that ends yeah. for you. <laughs> I guess there's just something about the Tullys that makes you want to just kill people and and you know start wars because. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite man. Moving into our next powerful love story. Mm-hmm. Littlefinger and the Tullys. Yeah. He loves Intense. them all. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, all right. So, Peter Bellish, we, we know that he pursued Catelyn Stark for Obsessed. almost his whole life. Mm-hmm. Ever since yeah. he was a kid. She, he was the, she was the only one mm-hmm. who had his eye. Right? He, he loved her from afar. He loved her from up close. Uh, her family took him in. Mm-hmm. And helped raised him, and uh, and he and he 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 loved her so much that even when he challenged, you know, um, Ned for her love, and was ripped into by it, big scar from mm-hmm. Littlefinger or from Ned, um, he decided, you know what, that's that's fine. He kept on going just like Pepe Le Pew does, <laughs> and he decided he would uh, he would go after Liza, yeah, her sister. <laughs> she, she's nuts, man. Liza Aaron, yeah, or it, her maiden name, Liza Tully, uh, loved Littlefinger so much mm-hmm. that he he was able to easily manipulate her into killing her husband, John Aaron. Mm-hmm. The yeah. hand of the king to Robert Baratheon, which is what also kickstarts our series. It's the reason why Robert rides up north to Winterfell to ask Ned Stark to come be the hand of the king because, hey, John Aaron died. And we find out later that who did it? Liza Aaron, because of at Littlefinger's bidding. Of course. She loved him so, so much. She loved him so much. It was crazy. Yeah. She, she married him, and she got pushed through the moon door. That she was it. By Littlefinger. Oh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> he, he actually said, I have only loved women. I have I, only loved women. I've and, only loved one woman. But, but then he pushes her through. It wasn't her. Room. It was your sister. He it's pushes Kat. her through. Yeah, Liza. He, he pushed. Her. He pushed Liza. Yeah. And, and then he he also pers- even after Catelyn was dead, he also pursued Sansa. Yeah. Now, what do you think about this? Dude. So, Littlefinger is in, so in love with Catelyn yeah. that he decides to fall in love with everything around Catelyn. Do you think that his yeah. love for Sansa is real, or do you think it's all, or it was all, a manipulative play? I think it's maybe both because he is so whacked in his head about her mm-hmm. he says that to Sansa you could have been my child immediately dismisses it was in the within the same paragraph and then kisses her on the mouth 
Like that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's yeah. wackadoodle. So I think like it's like you just told a girl, you could be my daughter. Oh, forget about it. You're really beautiful. Ah. Oh. It's like a pickup line in a bar. Yeah. You totally. look like you could be my daughter. He's a nutcase. <laughs> That's a terrible... Oh my god, I'm so young looking. Okay, okay. yeah. Obviously, he like projected the love he had for Catelyn yes. onto Sansa because that was the only option. And yeah, they do kind of look similar. So yeah. I can see why you would do that. Me too. See, I, I, little, uh, you guys know Littlefinger's my, my favorite villain. He's my favorite character in the, in the mm-hmm. series. I had to include him, but the big reason why I did is because the love story between him loving Catelyn from afar was such a powerful driver of so many different plot points of yeah. the show mm-hmm. that without that love that he an obsession that he had with Catelyn and her family, mm-hmm. we probably wouldn't have a show. You right, know, to be honest. Exactly. So um, I had to include that in most, one of the most powerful love stories that we had. Yeah. Especially because it's not conventional. A lot of these love stories are romantic. They we see him meet and then fall in love and then something happens to break him up. Whereas this love story was kind of always there, on the peripheral, like a smoke screen. We yeah. knew, we knew it was there, but we didn't realize how big of a driver it was for Littlefinger's actions that he was taking. It's well, and sad also, though because he never even ended it up with her. Like not even right. mm-hmm. at all. And she yeah. stood even up a date. for him. <laughs> Too. All the towards Ned, she was like, "He's been with me. You have to trust him because he's been with my family. Like mm-hmm. I would trust no one else." And then you're like, "Man," yeah. then he stabs him in the back. That's rough living. I did tell you not to trust me, right? <laughs> right? Man, yep. Um, so something that might be more of a traditional sense of a love story, but still unconventional, yeah. which also still we're still in the very beginning of the show. A lot of love stories happening mm-hmm. before our show even starts is I think one of the most powerful and complex love stories that we have in the show, and it is Cersei and Jaime Lannister. Brother and sister, yeah. the blonde lions, you know, they were mm-hmm. basically twins. I mean, they weren't, they weren't. Which one's older? Is Jamie's older, the older brother. Um, or are they, tw- no. I think he is older because yeah. in that prophecy it was like, you might be killed by your older brother or whatever. Right. Or younger brother. I don't know. By a few but I think seconds. he is the older. Yeah, yeah. By a few seconds, obviously. Mm-hmm. So Cersei and Jamie, who, who, who knows when they first started to have it's feelings for each other. It's kind of gross to think about. It is weird to think about, but it's funny how when we talk, when we romanticize mm-hmm. a forbidden love, we don't think about exactly why it's forbidden. We just know it's taboo. They shouldn't be together, but they overcome that that for that um, that no that society puts on it right and they say we're gonna turn it into a yes and we find that that's they overcame a challenge and it's romantic in a way right and, I mean what's the difference between thinking Cersei and Jamie are, are, are a powerful love story and versus uh, Jon Snow and, and Daenerys she's his aunt by blood, but no one seems to care. Everyone's like, oh, it's great. They're, 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 oh, I Brother love them because they're a power sister, couple. Though. Right. Brother and it's sister, though. Right. It's a little more closer. removed, so it's easy for us yeah. to deal with. Mm-hmm. But, like, also, uh, like, they had sex near Joffrey's dead body. Mm. Like, if that doesn't read, like, weird, funky love, dead I body. don't know what it is. Not dad body. Not dad body. No, not dad body. <laughs> oh, good Lord. They probably do that, too. <laughs> The things I do for love, yes. and then he shoves, mm-hmm. um, you know, w- what is it, Bran out Bran. the window, yeah. That's and what cripples started. him. Mm-hmm. That was the pilot. Literally yeah. the first episode, yep. mm-hmm. we see that. And, and it just, like, goes to show, like, they have literally both characters committed unspeakable acts for uh-huh. this love. Right. There's literally nothing they wouldn't do. Right. The things I do for love. Right mm-hmm. there. You said it. You said it. Um... It just, just yeah, it just goes to show that sometimes the uh, love in and of itself is an intangible thing, yeah. but that could be the reason why everything is happening. Yeah. Because it's something that can't be measured. There's no metric for it. There's no way to quantify it. And that's the abstract that, that drives a lot of the conflict that we have in our show, and, and it's a powerful one. So Cersei and Jamie. And they've lasted the longest. They've they lasted have. forever. They have, and what do you think? Do you think (laughs) at this point, what do you guys think? um, I mean, they're pretty much gone their separate ways. Right. The brother and sister, they're ex lovers. Where does their love story really end, or has it ended already? I don't think it has yet. I think he's going to be burying her by the end of this, for yeah. sure. That'll mm. be the end. That'll be his last he act of love. He will probably do it before he puts her in there and then put her in there. <laughs> Wait, what? There's a lot of... Oh, no! That's, I'm oh, sorry, no. but that's them. Oh, no! I'm just, 
I'm making. I'm making. Uh, so who's smart, going in? Uh, you know what? <laughs> smart predictions here. Okay. We have to re rewind later and yeah, figure out what and exactly you just what said. I meant. <laughs> I know what he's you gonna. Meant. You get it. <laughs> Definitely, there it and is. Then Jonathan in the booth. Barrier Helping the us thing. out. Okay. Um, <laughs> for, I mean, let's let's call it, they were first loves. Yeah. And first loves don't always work out the, the way that you expect them to. Mm -hmm. This is why I included this next powerful love story. Yeah. To illustrate that point. Sansa and Joffrey. Sansa was just a, a stupid girl with stupid <laughs> dreams. <laughs> of being a princess in King's Landing. She yeah. just wanted to be a queen. Mm -hmm. And we saw that her love was blind for Joffrey. Even when he did things that were big red flags, he was just, she would still stand by him. She mm -hmm. would still think, no, he's, he's a golden lion and we're gonna have golden babies. It, it was this blind love that mm -hmm. often happens when you have a first love. You know, your very first, you remember your first boyfriend, girlfriend? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you just think, all their flaws, they don't have any. Doesn't matter because yeah. it's the first time you're feeling this powerful thing. I yeah. think they still do that. So here's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Um. As it goes with many of our first loves, it doesn't work out the way it's it planned. Yeah. But especially for Sansa, it didn't work out for Joffrey, it didn't work out for Tyrion, it didn't work out for Ramsay, it didn't work out for Littlefinger. Sansa is going right. through, and through each step of the, of the way, she's kind of becoming more detached from what it seems like. You know that that girl who was willing to be in love with somebody, and now she's just completely right. detached. Uh, when you're following along her journey, what do you think? I her feel love like her story moves are is... like for power because in the in the part where Joffrey like actually brings her into the throne room and like starts to have the men like rip clothes off of her, and he says like leave her face, I like her pretty. Yeah. And then she's walking <laughs> away, and Tyrion saves her. And Tyrion is like, do you want me to end this this engagement? And she just says, like, I am loyal to my one true king, Joffrey. Yeah. And I think, like, she knows not to say, yes, I want out, and knows that I have to stand by him if I want to make it. So right. I think every decision after that, after Joffrey's, like, straight up bastard, are we allowed to say that? Yeah. Uh, we got a little E uh, next to our thing now. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Do, do we really? Now oh we my do. God. No. It's, but they are. <laughs> they're B A S T A R D's in the show. Yo, they're explicit. Oh, I'm PG 13 oh, over man. here. Uh, you guys get it. Um, Put your child away. I think she she's she's trying to make like smarter moves. Well, Especially ending up with like little finger down, down the line. Yeah. It's all been like, yeah. Yeah, she was real emotional in the beginning. She's yeah, and is grown, grown out of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do grow out of that. Um, so as soon as Ned wasn't in the picture anymore, that is when she became Joffrey's chew, like favorite chew toy because right. he mm -hmm. was like walking through the woods with her and he was being like this other person before that and then as soon as you know her her father wasn't you know hand of the king and the starks were starting to crumble mm -hmm. i mean he obviously used that to his benefit but then we got we got to see the real joffrey surface yeah which was obviously nasty Awful. yeah she went from yeah. she went from uh blissfully unaware of mm -hmm. the the dangers of falling in love with someone you don't know to someone who became quickly educated about you know Feelings aren't always the same as as logic and reason mm -hmm. would yeah. dictate. So <laughs> we've seen her grow. Do you think that she has a love story in her future? Or do you think that she's well past it and we're not going to see any more for Sansa? I just don't think we have time. I don't think we have time either. I think episodes. she's grown into like a woman who's like, I yeah. am not dealing with that anymore. Like, I want to. If you could pick someone for Sansa, who would you pick? Oh, God. Wow. That's a good question. Um, the Gendry? You'd pick Gendry? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. You know what? What? We might uh, even see that happen. That's a good prediction. That is good. Thank you. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Gendry and Sansa, I ship it. Ship it. Ship it. Ship it. it. One more thing about Joffrey. He would literally be with any woman who would stroke his ego. Oh, literally I agree. Anyone. I mean, his mommy taught like, him yeah. so well. Yeah, she just built him up. Like, what a... Oh, <laughs> I can't even say the words. Bugs me so much. You can now. You already. We're explicit we're now. So before we get into the next one, I just want to say, hey guys, thank you so much for making us the ESPN of TV talk. So don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Give us a rating on there. Give mm -hmm. us a thumbs up. Slam leave it. comments. Say how much you love this show. You love us. Tell us what you want us to talk about when we're back. Give us all the love. It's good. And follow us on Instagram too at AfterBuzzTV and all of the things. 
Um, After Buzz has meant so much to me because I met cool people and I talk about winter is here. Thank you so much for supporting us in what we do and what we love. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Love you. Okay. We'll get back to the love stories. <laughs> That should always Tara be a wrap. Yeah, the be nice. Thank you. Wow. We did awesome. it. Yeah, no, seriously, leave some comments. We love to read them. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. Um, let's, you know what? I find this love story to be one of the most fascinating ones of the show. Mm. Yeah. And I know you're ready. You're ready for it, ready? We're ready. We're so I'm just gonna, ready. I'm just going to come I out and say it. it. You say it. Dun, 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 dun. Da, John Snow da, and Egret. Da, 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 Obviously. John Snow and Egret. Mm. Talk I mean, about forbidden. Talk about forbidden love. Talk about first love. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, talk about the most uh, such a major conflict internally. John Snow had to break vows. He mm -hmm. had to get lost in the wilderness, get captured, threatened of life. You know, he and he lost his virginity to the girl after all said and done. Yeah. She shot him with arrows. I mean, the, this love story yeah, had so much fine. conflict. They, they climbed the wall so together. Good. They were on opposite sides. It was just it was such a beautiful love story from beginning to end. You know, she had she had, had to leave the show. Yeah. Unfortunately, Egret, you know, got killed off. Mm -hmm. And so it freed John up for other things. But he's emotionally even more scorned than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's okay because, I don't know if everyone knows, but we know... Kit Harrington, who plays Jon Snow, and Rose Leslie, who plays Egret, they ended up finding each other and falling in love and getting married in real life, which yeah. makes it a real life, true love story success. Yes. I think yeah. it's so cool. I think it's so rad. I, I love the line where he goes like, I'd love to see you in a silk dress so I can rip it off of you. And then ah. she's like, you rip off my silk dress, I'll give you a black eye. <laughs> That's not how she sounds, but I'm like, yes! It's and then cool. they like kiss. I just can't. Like, they're so... Ha 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 ha. So good. It, it was so pure, their yeah. love for each other. Yeah. Like, unlike most arranged marriages in this show, it was so pure. You could tell that they, like, really liked each other yeah. from the moment they met each other. And I feel like you don't get that many relationships like that in life where from the moment you see that person, you feel something. You know, yeah. I honestly thought she was... I didn't think that, I, th I thought that he kind of had a crush on her, but I didn't think she, mm. I thought she was just manipulating him, kind of using what she got to mm -hmm. work with to kind of get out of that prisoner situation. And she, yeah, she thought he was cute and whatever, but like, I figured her as more of a, like a, what's the? Like a mistress? Like, well, no, you like, you know, an F boy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like she's, for a like, girl. she's like, I'll give it to you, but I'm using it so I can get out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I thought she was using him, manipulating him a little bit, but um, there was a, a certain point that when her rage came out, she her love language was death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She killed people to show her That's love. Terrible. Yeah. You know? She did. I mean, she shot him with three arrows when he ran off. But you she know? Didn't, but she could have killed him. She could. She could have. She could she shoot just a squirrel through the eye from 200 yards, but she just wanted pain. to hurt him. She just wanted to hurt Can him. Can we talk yeah. about the cave? I, I mean, their romance oh had some of the most romantic moments of the show. Yeah, it was like it was akin to the top. You ever seen Top Gun? You know that scene mm. with Tom Cruise and the girl. <laughs> Take my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that magical. Like you're like watching in this, yeah. there's like a waterfall mm -hmm. in the cave, like a hot tub in a cave under a waterfall. <laughs> it's all underground, so it's private, but it's not, you know, it was, it was sexy. And then next time you kiss anyone after that, you're like, this is not, this is lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about all the things you do with your tongue? Oh, oh. Tongue. Oh. tongue. They should have stayed in the cave. <laughs> yeah, but they were doomed from the start. Never a happy ending in sight. I know. It's so sad when he dies and Especially, his arms. Yeah, I mean, he was undercover the whole time. He was still in the Night's Watch. Yeah. I mean, everything about it was forbidden, and there was, you're right, it wasn't destined to be a happy ending on screen. Thank God we got an off screen happy ending yeah. for that. Yeah. One. Together. Then, agree. Forever. Forever and ever and ever. And ever. <laughs> Until <laughs> death do us part, which, you know, in the Lord of the Game of Thrones could happen any day, usually at the wedding. Um, <laughs> speaking of death at the wedding, yeah, let's talk about this love story, which had a, a very, very weird start and a very silent end. Rob Stark and Lady Talisa mm -hmm. breaking promises. Yep, should have married Walter Frey's daughter and just had an affair with Talisa, but no, 
I mean, their love was so, I mean, and they were in a perfect position to be one of those romanticized love stories in Westeros. I mean, they could have written sonnets about these two. Yeah. You know, they met on a battlefield. He sends men to die and she heals them up afterwards. The spear and the shield of the North. Yeah. But yeah, no, no. Rob's uh, negligence to his duties led them down a path where they could not return from. And now they sing songs about the Red Wedding instead. That was just a bloody nightmare. And it was, it was, it was, it was one of those situations too where it, it's a forbidden love. Mm -hmm. He promised himself to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that wasn't that promise wasn't enough to keep them away from each other. I almost feel like it's because he promised himself to someone else that he was like even more. They were even Probably. more drawn to each other. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's yeah. almost like, will should we or shouldn't we? It's like, well, we know we shouldn't. Right. But will we? <laughs> but I feel yeah. like it, when they were in that tent and she told him that story about her brother and how she lost him and she thought that she let him drown and then he was saved by fishermen. It was like deep right off the bat where yeah. she was telling him all this info and then he was just looking at her like, oh my God, you're so open. Like, I love you. And then he's like, and then they just like all of a sudden stand up and he's like, I don't want to marry her. And she's like, I don't want you to marry her either, but you need that bridge. And then she yeah. just says this like, one line of like, I hope it's a beautiful bridge. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, what? No, you don't. Like, it was, it was so, <laughs> like, don't. it was such, like, poetry, like, writing the way that the words yeah. came out yeah. after that. It's like that, a, like, you like a soap opera. You can't not fall in love after the, that yeah. whole drama. So you're telling me you're leaving Jenny for me? Right. I can't. Yeah. yeah it was just so, yeah, it was I super can't. dramatic. I hope it's a beautiful bridge. But it was in that moment. <laughs> Do you think that you think that there could have been a happy ending? Like, do you think that there's any way? Because I almost felt like they were doomed the moment that they acknowledged that they shouldn't do what they're doing, right. but they're going to do it anyway. There was something about it you're watching, and you're like, wow, this is their downfall. Yeah. This, you know, you had this feeling like he's, uh, yeah. he shouldn't be doing that. You know, there's got to be another way. Was there any other way? If he, like, stepped down and was no longer, you know, in charge of the North and leading the armies, then I think maybe that they could have. And if yeah. somebody else <laughs> married Walter Frey's daughter, whoever took his place. Do you yeah. think there's more dishonor in <clears throat> just calling off the wedding, saying, I know I promised myself to you, but we're calling it off because I like her instead, which we saw how that played out, versus just keeping her secret, kind of, getting married, no, having because... her on the side. As a mistress on the side, does that work? He wasn't raised that way. Ned Stark and Catelyn like had such a good example, and Rob was like the guy who's like, you don't. He's like an honorable dude, yeah, just like his dad. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's even in his blood to be able to keep a mistress. He's like, I mean, he when no one else was around, sure, he's like, I'll marry one of the girls. When he asked his mom, like, have you gotten a look at him? And yeah. she goes, there was one. And you're like, oh god, <laughs> like it, the struggle is real. Yeah, but I still think like. Maybe if if she hadn't popped up, but like he he's an honorable guy. I think he he's been shown love by his parents, and I don't think he would have chosen any differently, even knowing the outcome. I think Rob is that guy, yeah. it's, like that he wants to be with who he truly loves. It's funny how you don't seem to win unless you stick to your lane in this show. Mm -hmm. When you stick in your path and you don't stray from it, no matter what. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities for Jon Snow to stray from the stuff that he is taught and knows is right, but he hasn't, and so he's still in the he game. He still yeah. has. He's somehow still... he has gotten around it. Somehow, right? Because somehow, he's like, yeah. yeah, from the wall. Destined. Uh, because yeah. he like went to the wall, that sort of like neutralized him from anyone. Right. Even though they had their own, you know, creed that he was supposed to follow and right. vows that he took. It seems like it neutralized him a bit. It's yeah. it's it's funny you say Rob Stark was raised, and I know we'll get off him, we'll get off th this move to the next, we have a few more to go, but it's funny, Rob is raised to be so honorable, and yet the one dishonorable thing that he decides to do is what leads to the massacre of his entire yeah. family. And it wasn't and even it's that. It's all out of love. It was all out of love. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the true lesson is here, stay away from Walter Frey, I guess. <laughs> Don't fall in love. <laughs> Don't fall in love, because we'll always end up hurting you, just like it did Daenerys and every man she's ever loved, yes. but let's go with the most powerful love story that we have for Daenerys, because she has a lot of guys, we'll talk mm -hmm, briefly yeah. about them, but I know this is your particular favorite. Yeah. Daenerys and Khal Drogo. Obviously, I think he gave her the strength she needed to embrace being Khaleesi and yeah. to 
progress forward into the path that she is in now. I think without him, she wouldn't have, you know, been able to rise as she had being with him and, and seeing what being his wife meant. So, you yeah. think she was kind of a victim of Stockholm Syndrome, though? A little bit? Because, like, look, they started off, she was sold to him, yeah, I know. she was yeah. raped by him. Yeah. Eventually, she figured out how to kind of take control and then was given a little bit of power and then all of a sudden it's you know mood of my life my sun and yeah. stars you know would she have loved him if it went down in any other way or did she have to be kind of put through that traumatic experience in order I think for it to so. happen yeah i think so i mean she's a strong lady he also like in the end he did save her from her terrible brother yeah. and then she ended up saving him from living a life like totally unfulfilled at the end you know so it's like mm -hmm. they both helped each other so whether or not like it was true true love even though i think it ended up being that way mm -hmm. like they both saved each other in, in in different ways yeah from terrible things well and we find that when she has her flashbacks with him it just I seems know. to be the most powerful remnant yes. of, a, of a true passionate I love agree. story in the show yeah. right and ever since then i mean we saw her she was the he was the first man she's been with but he mm -hmm. wasn't just a man he was like a God, he was like the leader yeah. of the Dothraki, you know. Mm -hmm. He like ruined men for her, mm -hmm. pretty much, right? Yeah. Because after that, she gets Daria Naharis, the <laughs> leader of the Second Sons. I mean, he, this guy is nothing to shake a, I don't know what the term is, to shake a tail at, shake a shake feather a, at, shake a something, yeah. to wag a finger. I don't know. Yeah. He, but he's like, he's a fine specimen, Ooh, a, so a warrior, but he's just straight up her rebound. Yeah. He's just mm -hmm. a rebound guy for her because she's not in love with him. No. Jorah Mormont, I think, was I think that, and I didn't really include a lot of it, but Jorah, I think, has the most more the most passionate, powerful loves for Daenerys mm -hmm. as, uh, that any character could have for another character on the show. Yeah, he loves her more than himself. Completely, I felt like that was a little one-sided, though. That really it was, up. and she friend zoned him hard, real hard. And we have a picture of Jorah friend zoning. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> See, that, that's the ultimate friend zone. Uh, that, that's going to be a meme That's someday. what it looks like, guys. Ultimate. God, Take note. But God, <laughs> oh, man. And, and I didn't really, well, let's not really talk about Jon Snow and Daenerys, because to be perfectly honest, I don't think it's a powerful love story yet. I think that's, that's not passionate yet. flirtation, infatuation, yeah. but... There were some closed doors nudity happening. There was, they did sleep with each other, yeah. you know, but I think it's too soon to tell if it's really a oh. love story or if, I mean, we can talk about it at the end if you want, but let's move on to... Another really powerful love story that spanned multiple seasons, Tyrion Lannister and Shay. What do you guys think of this? Because it was fun while it lasted, right? I mean, I still don't fully understand why Shay completely turned him. on him. Yeah, completely. I think she had to. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how she makes her money. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. It didn't really make sense, and I don't think it made sense to Tyrion either, which is why he... Yeah, why he... he, he killed he, her? He really, like, <laughs> yeah. He really broke it off of her there. Yeah, well, he was like, I can't be in your presence. I can't have children by you. Like, you know, it was like, by, I don't, can't say the word, but that's what she is. It's a gut-wretching uh, feeling. Remember when yes, he walks in and she's like, she's like, oh, my lion. Like, yeah, she used to call like, him, she's, she's talking about his dad. Mm -hmm. God. It's terrible. Yeah. It's a, it's a heartbreaking, like, kind of love story because he was, I feel like he truly was able to open up to Shay and Shay open up to him. Um, especially when they're all hanging out and he's like, he get, makes all these guesses about her family and she's like, wrong, wrong, wrong. And then he shares all yeah. of his stories. We never and really... we find out so much stuff about yeah. him and Bronn and, and we never really find out too much about her. Right. But there's like an openness that like Tyrion wants to find out more about her and obviously that grows because she she it seems like she likes him truly See, like loves him it seems that way doesn't it especially uh, yeah. with her it's, it's messed vehement up that objection. one messed me up i agree it messed me up a little bit every single time she would say oh you're ashamed of me you're hi you're hiding me it seemed like that was coming from a place of love obviously we didn't like you said know enough about shade we to really know. make a judgment mm -hmm. call yeah and just so happens that sometimes in life when someone loves you so much Maybe that's just enough to love him back. Yeah, but, or you miss a lot of signals or something. Like right? you love the other person <laughs> so much, you just miss things. Sometimes a per I'm gonna skip this one and go straight to Sam and Gilly because. Wait, no, 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 you dare. Well, we'll go back. Give me a second. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> We're so. Well, just <laughs> yeah. my favorite. Get at it. Get at it. Oberyn and Eloria 
Obviously, in uh, this universe, we root for the bastards yes. in this show. Yes, we do. And there's no <laughs> other relationship that compares. They were so open, passionate, free, sexy, violent, bisexuals. They were fearless. <laughs> yes. They had their priorities straight. Yes. It was either sex or it was fighting. <laughs> Not only that, but they had almost a pretty successful family together. Now, mm -hmm. Oberyn, as a prince of Dorne, can't marry a bastard, no right. matter who she is. So, Ilaria Sand, Sand being the, the surname given to bastards in the yeah. south, the sunny south, just like snow for the north, um, he, they couldn't be married, but he had children with her. Mm -hmm. Sand snakes. The sand snakes, he had oh, daughters, mm -hmm. he raised them, mm -hmm. and through all of that, it was forbidden, but he didn't care. He, he was going to love her anyway, yeah, and she was going to love him. It was forbidden, it was strong, yeah. and he loved her. From the all, all the way to the very last second, his yeah. head popped like a cantaloupe. Oh, <laughs> a little rough. And but, her blood curdling scream yeah. was the release of mm. a tr of a tragic love story ending. In the beginning of her revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then she went to war for him. You're right. They were I feel like they were the the yeah. West so Westeros's hottest power couple. Yeah. Agreed. I agree. Okay, now you can go to Sam and Gilly. Well, <laughs> no, you're, I, we weren't going to skip them entirely. I was just going to say, just like it is with Tyrion and Shay, I think it's kind of a similar situation with Sam and Gilly. You know, uh, Tyrion Lannister probably doesn't get a lot of attention sincerely from women. Right. Right? Yeah. He's because he has money and he has a good name. Mm -hmm. When he, As soon as he found some kind of sincerity, he jumped all over it. Right. He just, he's, he's a big, it fills up the big hole in his life uh -huh. mm -hmm. that we all have sometimes. Same thing with Sam and Gilly. I think that Gilly might be the only girl to have ever kissed Sam. Oh, yeah. Right? And also the only person who ever called him brave. When he saved her from Ghost, she's like, you're very brave. And he was like, oh, you know? And then he asked, like, Jon Snow to, like, take her. And they're like, we can't do that. Like, what are you going to do? Give birth to her baby? And he's like, I could try. Yeah. He's like, what? I've read books. And you're like, oh, this guy, he's yeah. going to, like, birth her baby, take her with her. It's it's like it, that's the sweetest love story in my opinion. Oh my god! And the guys. only one that says happy endings might be possible in yeah. the Seven Kingdoms. Do you want to say anything about Brienne and Tormund? They're making us wrap. I know we got to wrap. All right, guys, ready? We should do the game. Ready? Ready okay. for a rapid fire? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, last passionate love stories we got Brienne of Tarth and her boys. Brienne yeah. loved Renly so much yes. that she still loves him after he's dead. Mm -hmm. Jamie, it's complicated. And Tormund, <laughs> what? What? You know that wasn't that wasn't He's... written into the script, by the way. That's really? all I want to say oh about that. Oh my gosh, it wasn't. that is a great note. He it, seductively it, eats chicken towards her, and this is my favorite. Yeah, part. <laughs> yeah. It w just wasn't written in the script, and obviously, it's unusual when people, uh, when other people love the same people we love. Right. Usually, people are like, "Oh, I don't see them with that person," but in this story, everybody obviously shipped them, and so it just happened. But it wasn't written. I initially. shipped Brienne and Tormund. I want Jamie to be her best man. Perfect. Um, and. Uh, let's do it. Let's do uh, the game. Uh, the quick game. Yeah. Uh, so oh, wait, you didn't say anything about Cat and Ned. I was gonna do that last, but here we go. Okay. Since we're wrapping up, the, I think that the ultimate love story for our show is Catelyn and Ned Stark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Catelyn and Ned Stark were the uh, the rock yeah. of of relationships in the show. They yeah. they raised a, a, a fell family, fell in love after marriage. Kingdom, <laughs> fell in love after marriage. They had gone through it all. The uh, five children. Five children, they're a model example of a successful marriage. I think the only thing that was went wrong in their marriage is the fact that Ned Stark couldn't just tell her, hey, by the way, Liana had a kid and we're taking care of it now. Like, why couldn't he just tell her? I he know. didn't. Why I did agree. he have to, he yeah. had to like make he up didn't. this whole lie about like, oh, I, I slept with a girl and got her pregnant. Right. Now we had to raise this bastard. Like, why couldn't he, he just was, tell her? He was just protecting yeah. John. It's it's like he's such a virtuous guy that either way, you're like, you're you're such a chivalrous man. You should have told your wife everything, Ned. Uh -huh. That's where you yeah. failed, right there. That's the problem. Wait, bed, behead. Okay, Other great, let's that, do it. Greatest love story, I think. The, mm. the most solid, Catelyn and Ned Stark. Okay. Yeah. All right, so quick game. It's kind of like kill, uh, F, sleep Mary, with, kill. marry, mm. but we're calling yeah. it Wed, bed, bed, behead. Yeah. Wed, bed, behead. Wed, so bed, behead. So I'll do the first three. Renly, Jamie, and Tormund. Renly, Jamie, and Tormund. If yes. you were Bri Bri Brian, uh, Brian of Tarth, who would you pick to wed, bed, and behead? Renly, Jamie, Tormund. Go. Okay, I'm going to say I would I would wed Renly. Uh, and Renly? I would, uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. I would behead Jamie, and then I would go to bed with Tormund. Oh! oh I, I think Tormund would be a good husband. I'm he, marrying Tormund, going to bed with Jamie, and let's behead Renly. It got happened anyway. 
<laughs> yeah, Renly wouldn't enjoy sleeping with you anyway. I mean, but no. he was so sweet when he says that thing. Don't pay, pay attention to those nasty little guys. They're just out, and they'll, they'll always be nasty people. When he like when Renly says that to her, and I thought it was very sweet, and I'm like, that's like what a husband would say. Oh, so husband anyway, for a husband perhaps. That's but why yes. I chose that. All right, okay. so now let's get into Daenerys' head. Who are you picking to wed, bed, behead? Call Drogo, Daria Naharis, or Jon Snow? Come on, Daenerys. What are you doing? I, I picked wed, John, bed, Dario, behead, Drogo. Okay, so I did a oh, little bit. I know. I bet it held Drogo because did you see Aquaman? Also, <laughs> Dario Naharis, we behead him, and John, we get married. Hey, hey. <laughs> wow, so Rose Leslie's going to have a few things to say about that. Those are pretty good choices. All right, guys, and for the last one, one. Let's go with Littlefinger's mm. perspective. Mm -hmm. Out of all the Tullys, or I guess the Starks, or whatever you want to call them, Catelyn, Liza, and Sansa, Littlefinger, who are you picking? Uh, wed, wed Catelyn, behead Liza, bed Sansa. Exactly. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. ding, ding. ding, ding. There's pretty much only one right answer. You got you guys nailed it. There <laughs> was a few it. honorable mentions. Marjorie Tyrell and the Baratheons. I mean, uh, Selyse and Stannis. Stannis and Melisandre. Broad and oh Lady Lawless Stokeworth. I, there was a lot. There was a lot of love stories in Game of Thrones. Yeah. We couldn't cover them all. We only talked about the most powerful ones, especially ones intrinsic to the plot and yeah. development of our series. Um, and so that's all of them, you guys. Sorry we didn't have more time to talk, but we'll be back next month. It's actually going to be our very last show before the next season. before the before the season comes out season eight comes out um and Kristen, you're going to be hosting it next month we're going to be talking we're going to be talking we're going to basically recap the first few seasons and then we're going to give you our predictions of how Ooh. we believe the final season will end that's going to be fun i'm definitely yeah. looking forward to hearing more about this gendry sansa theory there you go this prediction good theory um but guys from from everyone here i'm ryan lotty uh, this has been a, a, one of my favorite shows to do of all time, Game of Thrones off season. Uh, we'd love to have you. Thanks so much. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. And Kristen, where can we find you? Keep up with Guys, you. you can keep up with me at Cinematic Escape on Cinematic all Escape. the social mediums. And, you know, this show, it's been powerful. It's been lovely. Where yes, can we find you? Yes, I love it. Winter is here at Tara Erickson and also YouTube.com backslash Tara Erickson. Come say hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Okay. We'll be here next month right here at AfterBuzz TV. Thanks for coming. Winter is coming, too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.